In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. David poses a question for us this day as we listen to his words from Psalm 8, verse 4. What is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? If a picture is worth a thousand words, then what is the picture of our Lord suspended from that cross worth? Well, on this Good Friday, that picture to our God and our Father who lives in unapproachable light, that picture is worth your salvation. As we think about our Lord who was cursed for us, who himself became a curse and hung on that tree, we ask ourselves, what does that picture say to us? That picture says to us that God does not treat sin lightly. God punishes that sin. Our tendency may be to hit fast forward, to blow through this part of Holy Week, to gloss over the consequences of sin. But God doesn't do that. We don't do that today. Do we think about these pictures, the images we have in our minds of our Lord's death, the words read from Holy Scripture, we see how God treats sin. The picture is graphic, isn't it? That picture of Christ hanging there on the tree, it's not a picture we want to dwell on. It's not a picture that we like to keep in our hearts and pull out when we're down. That picture of him there suffering is a picture that gets to us, doesn't it? It's the reason why I have a hard time watching the movie The Passion of the Christ. The content, the graphic nature of it, the crucifixion, the bloody violence of what he endured. We want to wipe it off of our minds. Let's go straight to Easter. But as we think about our Lord's death today, that picture says to us more than any words could ever convey of what our Lord has done for us. What does the picture of Christ on the cross say about us? It says that we need this day. We need Jesus to give his life as a ransom for many. We need Good Friday, because it was our sin that put him on that cross. All of our sin imputed, put on, placed on him, all of his righteousness given to us as a free gift. All of it given to our Lord. Jesus becomes the lightning rod, lightning rod of all of God's wrath and anger over sin. God does not and will not take sin lightly. What does this picture of Christ on the cross say about us? Well, it says what Psalm 14, verse 3 says. There is no one who does good, not even one. If you think you can sweep your sins and mistakes before God under the carpet that he will not notice, 
that you can get away with that white lie, that little sin, that little lust. Remember, there is no one who does good, not even one. All their deeds are corrupt, all their ways are vile. There is no one who escapes the judgment of God. As we come before God this day, we remember that there is a picture which captures this all nicely in a nutshell. A picture which reminds us that God so loved the world. This is Salvador Dali painting, Dali Salvador's painting. Uh, in the early 1950s, he painted Christ on the cross, an image of Jesus suspended above the sky, looking down on the world with a Galilean fishing boat underneath, but Christ who gave his life for the world. Doesn't that picture remind us of that famous gospel in a nutshell verse? Let's read it together. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Isn't that what Good Friday is about? A God who so loved us to give up his son? Let's read this verse one more time. Let's bring it home. Put your name in there. For God so loved Joshua that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. That's the picture of our God today on this Good Friday, a God who so loved the world, a world filled with violence, hatred, discord, strife, mutiny, a God who loved even that world to come, to die, to give his life as a ransom. It all comes full circle for us as we listen to the Old Testament. As the Old Testament foreshadows God's great love, this picture for me sums up God's love as the father, a father willing to give his son. Just as Abraham was called to leave his land, to go to a land unknown that God would make him the father of many nations, and then from his lineage bring about the, the savior, Jesus, he called Abraham to sacrifice his only son. And Abraham in faith followed listened, Abraham willing to give up his son. That really foreshadows God, doesn't it? What God is going to do. Where is Jesus in the Old Testament? He's all over the place. He's in Isaiah 53. He's the suffering servant. He's in Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He's in Isaac being sacrificed on the altar. It's the good news for us today. He is the lamb who was slain for you. 1 Corinthians 5, verse 7, for Christ, our Passover lamb, has been slain. That's what Good Friday is about. Separating ourselves from the past, clinging to Christ who is our hope and our resurrection life, knowing that it is him that all of our sins are taken away, all of your sins left there on the cross in the tomb of Easter, you have this picture from God. God loves you. God sent his son to die for you. Because of that, you have eternal life. May you go with that picture today as you cling to the cross in Christ's love for you. Amen. Now, may the peace of God which passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.